what is a startup? And what is philanthropy? I want you to think about what comes into your mind first when you hear those words. Too many times we hear that it's the idea that makes or breaks a startup, and it's the amount of donation that determines the impact of philanthropic activities. But is that really the truth? Today, I want to talk about startup is not about the donation. Uh, is not about the idea, and philanthropy is not about the donation. I want to prove those seemingly counterintuitive statements through sharing my story of starting a social venture called Tinknit. Most importantly, I want to show that even as a student, you can create sustainable changes in your community through entrepreneurship. So I'm going to talk about my story through this year TEDx Round Two's topic, Edge, which is explore, discover, grow, and engage. So let's start with my phase of exploration. Coming into Brown, perhaps like all of you here today. I knew that I wanted to make a difference throughout my time in college. It's nothing as crazy as I want to change the world, but I knew that I want to do something meaningful, something that perhaps can make lives better for the people around me. My first life-changing exploration was about the concept of social entrepreneurship. So previously, I thought, well, business and philanthropy, or for-profit and non-profit companies, are like the two extreme ends of a spectrum. However, the concept of social entrepreneurship shows that it's actually possible to take the middle of the spectrum, that is, to use business as a way to conduct philanthropic activities. And in fact, social entrepreneurship might even exceed traditional nonprofits in terms of its impact and efficiency, because instead of relying on donation, you can shift the under status quo, and you can sustainably and innovatively solve the social problems. So I thought that was the magic of social entrepreneurship, and I knew that. I want to do something related to it. Since then, so my second mind-blowing exploration was about the single motherhood issue in Rhode Island. So, before I went into the shelter first time, I thought about what to expect. If you think about homeless, think about what comes into your mind. For me, I thought about the guy on Thayer Street who used to ask me for money. I would think about you know middle-aged men who are maybe unemployed. They're looking for ways to survive in society. However, what I have encountered is totally different from what I have expected. I saw kids, kids who are running around, laughing, as if it's not a place without hope, but a place full of hope. Then I realized all of those kids are from single mother families. In fact, 30% of the homeless population are families, with the majority being single mother families. After talking to mothers, I realized that half of them even have college degrees. So of course, I had to ask, "What brought you here today?" Then I began to understand that they're here not because they're not capable of finding a job, but because their kids are too young. There's no one else to take care of them, and the daycare cost is even more than what they can earn. So they're like trapped in this vicious cycle, and that really struck me. So that day when I came back to College Hill, I began to think, what are some things that I can do as a Brown student to help them? I thought about the social entrepreneurship concept. So naturally, I thought about I can start a social venture, but I need an idea, an idea that can really help solve this work-family conflict those single mothers are facing. So the problem is they have to choose in between. Staying at home, taking care of the kids, and going out to work and making an income. But what if we can make two things happen at the same time? What if we can help them make an income while being at home? So that's when I thought about knitting. I was never a knitter myself, but I thought knitting would be the easiest way for them to produce something valuable while being at home without too much skill and investment. So that led us to the phase of discovery. So when I was looking for YouTube videos for knitting tutorials, I discovered loom knitting, which instead of using traditional needles, you actually work with this big round loom, and you just have to wrap the yarn around and hook them over each other. Really easy to learn. Probably took me one hour to get it, and two hours to make a hat. And that discovery was definitely incredible. Then my challenge was to make actually appealing products that people will be interested in buying. So I discovered that. Rhode Island School of Design, RISD, right next door, have a knitting professor, and they also have some apparel design and textile students who are interested in our idea. So I went downhill, talked to them, and that helped me to get a much better sense of knit accessory design. Afterwards, 
I was able to create those very simple products that looks pretty, just with the easiest pattern, with a thick, bulky wool yarn. And so I thought, this is probably going to work. And I taught a bunch of brown kids who all had no knitting experience before, and they all got it really fast and finished our first hat. So I was confident that this idea can perhaps be turned into reality. And that officially led us to phase of growth. So in order to grow, the first thing that we have to figure out is our distribution. We had this amazing idea, but it's only going to work if we can actually sell them. So one day I was walking on Thayer Street, and I walked past a brown bookstore. That was when I began to think, it might be a really good idea if we can sell the products here, because it will perfectly target our customers who are people interested in supporting brown student social ventures, perhaps also very interested in buying something handed by the single mothers in our community who are in need. So, the next day I walked in, pitched my idea to the bookstore director, and through a lot of negotiation, we were able to establish this cooperation with them. And not only did we get a display table right at the entrance of the bookstore, but also were we able to sell through the bookstore online shop, reaching out to more alumni and prospective students. Afterwards, everything just kind of kicked off. We hosted a knitting workshop. We got 65 pre-orders to help fund our investment in looms and yarn. And afterwards, that was the one I was trying to think, while we already help those mothers financially in the short term, how can we really empower them to rise above poverty in the long run? So I thought about hosting like workshops, skill training workshops. Um, so I reached out to the Brown Career Lab to host resume workshops for them inside the Career Lab. Um, also, Captain Good Fund hosts financial coaching workshop, and also we found a local lawyer who helped them with their legal issues. So this has gradually became a community for the single mothers, where they can meet other moms, mingle with others, bring their kids, have their students there, play with the kids, and also learn something meaningful during the time when they come to Brown. I knew that this is something that how we kind of kicked off, but I knew that it's not going to be that easy. Along the way, constantly we have to adapt to challenges. One of the examples was our inventory problem. As our number of knitters grew from about 10 to 30, 40, it's been harder and harder for us to keep in track of our real-time inventory. And it's very challenging for the business team because then they can't really project our accounts receivable accurately. To solve this problem, we reached out to the Brown Computer Science Department, and now we have an amazing CS team developing this inventory management app for us, and it will help us to better track our financial situation as well. Another example was um, we wanted to increase awareness on campus for the single motherhood issue. So our marketing team, they created this social media campaign, and one of them was working with professors, for example, Professor Hazelton and Annie Van Dam, that created Social Media Blast. Another problem that we faced was transportation. So we had to go to the shelter every month to host workshops, but getting there is really hard. So we reached out to Uber, and what they did was a partnership where if you sign up with a cold tank knit and you're a new user, you get a free ride while Uber will donate $10 to us. That would go to our transportation funds. When we just launched our new product, the Cup Cozy, we wanted to sell it, so we partnered with the underground coffee shop. Now if you bring in a Cup Cozy, they'll get 50 cents off your coffee. So these are all the ways that we thought about to adapt to the challenges that we face. It's about kind of leveraging the resources around you, partnering with other organizations, and just constantly trying to think out of the box and make it happen. So that kind of brought us to where we are here today. Within a year, we sold 500 products, how 30 single mothers increased their income by 50%, and we've given back to the mothers $10,000 directly to their bank accounts. And we received multiple awards, including the McKinsey Women's Impact Award, and were featured on publications, including Roland Monthly Magazine. We would never have gotten to where we are today just with the idea. It's easy for me to say right now that well, we've accomplished so much just within a year and a half, but it wasn't as easy as it sounds like during a time when we're trying to overcome one challenge over another. We're all students. For me, I'm taking full course load, but I have to spend 40, 50 hours a week on Tinknet to make it run because this is a real business that's making real impact. So that's really about believing what you do. You have to just always keep on going, never give up, no matter what challenge you're facing. So coming back to the first two questions that I asked in the beginning, what is a startup? What is philanthropy? I would say that through my experience, startup is about believing, persisting, and always being passionate. It's about the implementation, not merely just the idea. Philanthropy is about 
empowering those in need to rise above poverty and become financially independent. It's about shifting the unjust equilibrium, not merely just the amount of donation. And that is why I say, startup is not about idea. Philanthropy is not about donation. I want to end my speech today through engaging you with one of the single mothers in our program. Maria was a single mother who joined us a year ago while she was still unemployed and going through depression. She now has a full-time job, has a house, a dog, and she just graduated from Tinknet. Let's see what she has to say to us today. The one for Poland, when you say that, that's from the, the series. Oh my God. What's the name? Crouch? No. I don't hear that. The story? That, that series? About these people that are different animals, the shape and everything. Oh my God. Time to remember the name of that. It's very popular because it's from, for, from Poland. But I don't, it doesn't come to my mind now. Well, I've been out of my country since almost 20 years ago. Wow. I used to live in Puerto Rico. Then I moved here to Rhino 11 years ago, which is a fun that we're different from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Yes, I have two girls, one is nine years old, the other is 15 months old. She's the queen of the house. Because, you know, I got a baby, I, got, I get to do blue times. And my doctor connected me to the program. That's when I met a, one of the moms. She, she was always needing and asking how, how it was it. You know, she wasn't doing for a hobby. And then she told me, she talked to me about the program, how the program was helping her. I found it very, very good. I don't know about the program, but about technique is a way good, good program. You, may, you get to meet new people from other moms over there. That also can, of course, the moms, they got kings out of the central, my daughter. They, they can play over there. So it's like a, I feel like when I go to the workshop, like a, like a going to a park where my daughter stay over there playing with the other kids. It just me and the other moms doing the workshop. And she likes it because when she talked with the students, she told me, they always ask her what she wants to be. She says, oh, I'm going to be an astronaut. She wants to be a scientist. I like the way they explained it to her because it won't want to open her mind. Oh, I hope she's going to be thinking about it when she gets older you know, and she wants to be in college. If you had her right in front of you right now, what would you say to Julie? I would say thank you. Thank you for having me in the program. Thank, thank you for getting that idea to help moms and they help the community. Which is a, I don't know how other people never thought about it, which is a fun, so good. There's nothing more meaningful than being able to make lives better for the people around you when you're 20 years old. And there's nothing better than being able to work with a group of friends who probably come from a different background and have different skill than you do, but all have the same passion and the same goal. So if you want to start something, start today. That's the end of my talk. Thank you. <laughs>